Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about how to create a um, multi-select contextual drop-down. What do I mean by that? Well, have you ever faced the need to do something along this, along these lines, where you've got, <coughs> excuse me, where you've got uh, values here that are based on the values that you have in here. So again, if we, if we just unselect everything, you can't select anything. If you select something up here, you get selections here and so on and so forth. Now it's important for me to say that this doesn't include validation and, and stuff like that because that's going to be very um, specific to your particular needs and it's really more about uh, how Angular reactive forms work rather than sort of this particular solution. So I've just gone for a real bare bones solution here but I think it looks pretty good and I think for what we get out of it it's a pretty um, uh, pretty pretty good sort of clean solution. So let's see what you think. Okay, so let's start at just sort of seeing what this is doing. So I've added in some tap operators uh, just so that you can see what is emitted from here. So I am using RxJS uh, 6. I'm using observables. If you're not comfortable with what observables are, I would probably go and figure that out and then come back. I do have a blog post on observables as well as a few uh, tutorials on, on what observables are and how to think in terms of observables. So uh, please, please go and have a look at those. Uh, but if you're comfortable with observables and you're comfortable with reactive forms, then this should be pretty simple for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take us through what's happening here. So let's go and have a look in our TS file here. Uh, and let's let's just get some more screen space for now. Okay, so I haven't actually got that much. So let's just look at what we've got. We've got this this here, and all this is doing is declaring our form group, declaring our form controls, which are the, which are the reactive forms. Um, if you don't quite know how they work, we've not used them before, but you do have a good understanding of array um, of observables. Then you know. You'll, you'll figure that out pretty quickly as we go down this code. I've got two uh, two pure functions here. One of them essentially grabs for every object in the array. So for every one of these objects in the array, it essentially just grabs this options array and sticks it into an array. So it, it just gives me an array of arrays. And then the second uh, pure function here simply flattens an array so that instead of an array of arrays, I just get a array. And we're going to see that now. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So if I just pick one thing, that gives us the simplest way of looking at this. So these are the three things. This is the initial thing that's emitted from this value changes observable. So we get the emission of one object uh, in this array. Then once we apply this map to this uh, operator to it, we then get this. We get an array which contains an element of array. And we only get one array within the array because we've only got one object. So that should make sense. After that, after this map here, all we're doing is flattening. So essentially it gets rid of this, this level and just places these objects within the same array. Now, just to highlight that, if we if we have two things, we, we get an array of arrays with this array and this array. But then at the end of here, we've just got this flattened, uh, nice flattened structure ready for the next drop down. OK, so that's kind of how that all works. And the rest of it's pretty simple stuff and, and should be evident uh, for most people that are, sorry, evident for most people that, uh, you know, are comfortable with observables. So let's just grab, let get rid of this now. Just I want people to to see that this is a really simple solution. Um, I'm certainly happy with it. I, I'm sure there are, there are you know improvements that could be made. If you are one of those people that know of an improvement, please comment below. I'm very happy to uh, uh, see where I could have done better, etc. Okay, so now what we end up with is we end up with this subsource observable and our initial source observable. Let's go and have a look in the HTML or in our template. And the template isn't that difficult to grasp. All we've got is a form group here, which takes in the form group that we had in up here. So that's that form group there. And then we've got two form controls, which we've got as genus and subgenus. 
We obviously declare multiple so that we end up having this multi-select rather than a single select. Uh, is important to know if you do get rid of that, you are going to have to change both the operators and you are going to have to change the initial value of the form controls. But other than that, yeah, you you could you could change this solution to end up with a single select um, contextual dropdown. Okay, so let's just go into the next line here. We've just got an ng4. We're just iterating over our uh, first our source observable and saying that we're going to let that be let let each iteration be species. We're including the async pipes that we're actually subscribing to this and getting the emission of the observable rather than the observable object itself, which is very important. And we're also saying that when someone selects whatever is in here, we don't actually just want to send this in the observable. What we actually want to send is species. Now, because species is whatever is whatever the object or element in this array is, it actually ends up being uh, the object. So the object being this here. So pretty simple. And then finally, all we've got in here is just what we actually want to display. And in this case, it's going to be bird, reptile, mammal, and fish. Okay. Um, same thing happens here. The only difference really is the fact that instead of, uh, instead of subscribing to our source observable, we subscribe to the subsource observable. Now, I already went through what the subsource observable does earlier by showing you the transformations that we make. So it shouldn't be a surprise that we essentially are iterating through um, a array of these objects here. So we are iterating through an array of these objects here. Now, this is a really simple example, but you could have an, an array of objects of massive objects or different types of objects. As long as you've got something to display, like a name, you know, this should be fine. And the only difference that you'll end up with is changing the value to whatever you've placed here. Sorry, changing the value, the actual value uh, property to this. And also, you know, obviously, displaying whatever it is that you want to display. Hopefully, this means that if you wanted to add three, four, five of these um, drop downs that were each dependent on the one to the left or one uh, above, then you could do so. And I think I worked out you probably end up adding uh, four or five lines of HTML. And I think it was three or four lines uh, in here. Uh, sorry, in this component here. And Obviously, you're not going to have this in the app component. You're going to have this in a separate component. So it should keep the component fairly maintainable. Now, the final thing that I'm going to mention is if you haven't been using reactive forms before, you will need to add reactive forms module to your module. In this case, I've had to add it to the app module. But if your if your reactive forms are only happening in you know one module, two modules, then just add them add them into those modules. And the other thing that I've had to do because of um, Angular material is I've added browser animations module. Finally, you do not need to use Angular material. I could get this working, and I have got this working with um, a typical un unthemed, unstyled select with multiple on it, and that has worked. As long as you can link it, as long as you can link these things to a reactive form, this pattern should work for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So finally, all I want to say is I do have my blog uh, in the description. If you would like to copy this code, copy paste this code, or just read reread what I've just said here, um, please go ahead. I hope you found this interesting, useful even. If you have, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, but uh, obviously, if you do have any suggestions on improving this, any questions, um, any suggestions for um, adding to this or any sort of features that you would find helpful added to this, then feel free to let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, I could end up releasing another video or re-editing this video to include include those um, constructive criticisms. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.